It's really great to see everybody here today. Um, we'd love to see how many job seekers are in the room. How many people looking for work? Anybody? That's great to see. How many people here supporting people looking for work? Right? So lots of people there too. And how many employers? I know some are coming later on in the day because we have uh, a chance to talk to employers. Any employers in the room? Yep. One at the back. Uh, so we have... Um, have some uh, others coming along later. So thank you very much again. It's really exciting. Um, we were saying this morning, Alice and I from Access Employment, how uh, you know there's a lot of work that goes into things. And then to be here this morning with all of you uh, really launching this initiative um, is really exciting for us. So we're all here to help you. If you can't understand anything that I'm saying, please feel free to put your hand up and we'll have somebody uh, interpret. So don't be afraid to jump in and wave and stop me because I want you to, to hear everything, okay? And I'll try and talk slower. I usually talk really fast and I'm finding myself trying to talk slower. So just somebody put your hand up if you are having a harder time uh, understanding me, okay? Promise? Good. So what is Magnet? Magnet's actually a initiative like we've heard out of Ryerson University. Um, and we're really excited to be working with all of the great employment agencies represented by CASAP in the greater Toronto area, um, like Access and others in the room. Really excited to be working with all of you to help. So many of you are already working with somebody, maybe at one of these uh, employment agencies, and that's really, really important to get that one-on-one uh, -on -one help uh, to make sure your resume is created and so on. And what Magnet's doing is helping connect all of those uh, employment agencies and groups, help you build a profile so that we can actually help employers connect to you faster. And also, when we get the data to understand all of your different skills and experiences and what makes each of you unique, we're actually going to be able to also understand how to serve you better in the city and as a region. So that's why it's important. We're going to be talking about building your profile today, um, and we'll go through that. So I'm going to do a quick presentation and then a quick demonstration, and then we're going to take you to another building <laughs> where we have a computer lab, okay? And you're going to actually sign up and build a profile. It's not mandatory, but we would like to help you get through to get at least the first part of your profile uh, set up today so we can make you available to employers, okay? So we're just going to start. I'm just going to show you a little bit about what uh, Magnet's about. So again, today it's about building a profile. You'll start to receive targeted opportunities. So um, based on your skills and qualifications. And we will also have customized learning content. So the other thing, it's not just about jobs, but we'll be able to put in videos, um, and all kinds of things to help, and we'll talk about that in a little, little bit. This is what your profile will look like once it's built, okay? And we'll be able to share videos with you into your profile and information that's relevant to you, okay, to help you get jobs, okay? How many of you have a LinkedIn profile, okay? That's a really good thing to have. Um, and this, uh, this is another thing, it's similar, but it's a private profile, okay? So it's not public, Peop other people can't see it. It's a private profile and it's a profile that all of us working to support you uh, can connect to and can share information with you on. Does that make sense? So you can actually sign up using your LinkedIn account. So you can create an account you know, using your social uh, media account or you can start it from scratch. The profile is private, and when you go in, you're going to have a custom view okay, of, of information that's relevant to you. So if you're somebody that has worked as a, um, in a particular trade, and we have opportunities, we can actually direct them directly to you. Okay, makes sense? Um, the next thing is, within a week, you're going to have functionality. So we don't only expect you to find jobs on Magnet. You'll be working with your career counselors and, and support, uh, people supporting you. And you could be looking on a big job board like Indeed. Has anybody heard of Indeed? Right? So a few of you. It's one of the bigger job boards. It's a job aggregator. 
But what you'll have in another week is the opportunity to download a browser extension that will allow you to search on any site and collect the information. It'll allow you to track and manage all of your applications. How many people, what do you think the average number of jobs you should be applying to is? Not per day, just overall. 200? I always say as many as it takes to get a job, mm -hmm. right? So, um, and sometimes it can be a little bit challenging and you want to be working with your counselors, right? The people that can help you because if you're not getting a lot of responses, you're either maybe applying to the wrong uh, jobs, maybe there's not a great fit, or your resume and so on could be uh, position you a little bit better for that job, right? So looking at the uh, volume of jobs you're applying to and the responses you're getting is important. And this will help us do that. And for the uh, counselors and frontline workers in the room, uh, we will be able to share this information uh, with people that are supporting you. Um, planning on putting in Arabic content, and there's a lot of great content that already exists. So this is just an example. Um, and we're gonna be looking and curating and placing content. A lot of it can be in, again, in, in Arabic or it will be closed caption, just so if there's any, you know, a little bit, uh, it'll help make sure you understand all of the content. Does that make sense? Okay, the benefit for employers, um, it's gonna be free, completely free to post, no matter where you come in, and you can work directly with your employment agency that you already have a relationship with, um, but you can also search across all of the other employment agencies as well. So there'll be one point of contact. We always say it's one point of contact, but you can walk through a lot of different doors, okay? But it still connects you to the big network of organizations supporting you. Um, it can be, your postings can be targeted based on skills, education, and experience. It can also be, um, postings can also support, wow, I must have did that this morning on the train. That's a mistake. Um, but postings can also be targeted based on employment equity filters, okay, and by support organization, okay. So an employer can come in and actually look for candidates in a certain support organization or in the, the whole pool, okay, and we'll talk about that. So when you build a profile and you're going to be in a room uh, today with uh, Susie over here, we'll be in one room and I'm going to be in the other. So we'll help you and we have um, teams that'll come around and help you do this. One of the important things is we know that you're affiliated with the Syrian jobs agenda because of the site that you're signing up through. So there's a specific page I'm gonna show you in a minute. And then you have the ability in Canada, we have uh, what we call employment equity categories. Um, so if, uh, for example, you're a woman, or have a disability, or any of these other categories, you can privately and securely self-identify in the system, and that's another uh, factor that employers are able to use to um, connect with you. So targeting by affiliation, uh, as you can see, all of the agencies, the CASIP agencies, as well as um, Refugee Career Jumpstarter here, so you can select all, or you can select any individual one or combination of those. Targeting by employment equity category. So again, it's indigenous, LGBTQ, visible minority, persons with disabilities, women, and newcomers. So you should definitely check newcomer, okay? Um, and if you're a woman, you should check woman, okay? And any other categories that apply. Um, and then the last thing I think is really important for all of us, one of the things that every agency in this room um, it's really amazing, I think, to see all of us coming together, working together to try and, and really make the system work even more effectively for you. There's so many amazing people in amazing organizations in Toronto that want to help you, and we're really working hard to also work together to help you. Um, and so one of the things that this will allow us to do is also see for example, all of the activity. So where are you applying for jobs? What types of jobs are you applying for in aggregate? Again, it's not, this is not personal information. And we'll be able to see what we call the skills profile, okay? So of all the refugees that sign up for a profile 
through this system, we'll be able to see your skills, your qualifications, um, you know, geographic areas where you are. So we can actually, it can form what we call policy and training and programs. So if the government wants to be more effective in funding things, we'll actually have the data to be able to do that. Okay, does that make sense to everybody? So by working together, we're actually going to be able to address a lot of those issues. So, questions. And then we're gonna, we're gonna break and actually go to another uh, room. And again, as you leave, we have to collect your waivers if you haven't handed them in already. And very important, as you're leaving, we're going to take it from you, ask you if it was your signature, and also witness it, okay? Because you notice a line for witness on the back. So it'll be witnessed as you leave because we have to make sure everybody um, that uh, is in the session has a, uh, has a waiver, okay? Any questions about what we're doing? I'm gonna show you actually in the system for a few more minutes. Um, so we're not gonna break for the lab right yet, but does anybody have any questions yet? Okay. So, sorry? Is there anybody here that's a job seeker that does not have an email address? Okay, everybody has an email? Hanin, do you want to just make sure, repeat that? Um, uh, That's great. So it looks like everybody has one. Good. So what you'll find, all you have to do is go to www.magnet.today and we have some other sites that will be put up with CASIP and other organizations, but for today to get started. Um, and you'll see, this is our homepage. So you would go here if you're looking for a job. If you're looking to hire Syrian refugees, you would hit on that link. So we're just gonna go in really quickly. I already have an account made, um, but we're going to go through the process in the lab. So I'm going to skip over some detail. Um, but what you'll do is you'll actually choose the agency that you were referred to this event by. Do you all know the agency that you're working with, okay, that you're referred here by? So when you do that, you'll go to each agency. So if it was Access Employment, you're just going to click there, and it's going to take you to the sign-in page. And that allows us to make sure that we know the people that are affiliated with Access Employment, okay? So it's important that everybody picks the organization that they're being supported by. Once you get here, you can sign up using your um, LinkedIn account. One of the things I wanna make sure, because my understanding is that some people had some social media sites set up for them, like Facebook or LinkedIn. It's important that the account that you use has an email that you have access to, right? Because we're gonna be sending job alerts through the system and it's going to go to the email that you either use to sign up or that you use for the social media site, okay? So if you have an email that was set up by somebody else for you, it'll be really important just to use your email to sign up. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, so I'm just going to sign in. Um, how many people uh, have a resume already? Okay, how many people have it with you? Okay, in electronic? Electronically? Or? Okay, well I can't, we can't upload paper. Um, but uh, what we'll do, so when you come in for the first time, what's going to happen is you'll either be able to do a quick start by answering questions. So if you have a resume electronically, you can actually put it in the computer in the lab on a stick and just hit uh, browse, find the file and upload it, okay? If you don't, just press skip this step, okay? Make sense? So I'm just gonna show you how it works. We'll go browse, find a resume, Upload, it'll bring all that information in, um, but then we're gonna ask you a few more questions, okay? So in this case, 
Um, it had the postal code on the resume, so it picked it up. Does everybody know what a postal code is? It's the area where you're living. Okay, that's important. Um, so you just have to fill out the rest of this. And I'm going to go through really quickly. But we'll say Ontario, Toronto. Um, you can also put the countries. You're, how many people are eligible to work in more than one country right now? Okay, so there's at least three or four people. So you can actually put in, for example, if it was United Kingdom, you can actually add that, press continue. Um, it'll then ask you, so it's gone and it, it's picked up all the information from your resume and it says shows an educational record here. So it picked up that you have an undergraduate degree. So all you do, and we'll help you with this in the lab, but you just go through filling out the information. How many people, anybody in here is an engineer? Figured, one, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine, and one guy doing this, so. <laughs> <laughs> Almost engineer. Computer science. Computer science, well, that's good. So if you go engineering, you can start putting in engineering, and you see, it might be hard to see at the back, but all of the different fields will come up. So make sure you designate, okay, you understand? Um, so your faculty, your focus area, and we have, we think, a very um, comprehensive list. But if you have anything that you're um, concerned about, it might be that we talk about, maybe have a different way of expressing that focus area here. So just talk to one of us um, in the uh, labs. Then it's just start date and end date, continue. And you have a highly searchable profile already with all your resume in it. You see how it's pulled everything in? But you can add, you don't have to, but you can add a photo. You can also add um, videos, uh, it's a full what we call portfolio. So if you have um, places where you've worked professionally, any information like that, then you can actually add it in, okay? So that when an employer connects with you, they're able to see that information, right? Um, you'll see over here, it says one more required field and three more recommended fields, okay? So what we did is just made it fast for you to get a, a profile really quickly, but there's other recommended fields. Um, it's just important that, you know, if you have a profile that's as complete as possible, then you'll be more likely to match to a whole variety of opportunities. Uh, but what's really important is that your most recent professional work in your most recent education. So we would like you to try and get at least those two things today in the lab, okay? Because that's basically what is going to be most relevant. When you have time, when you're um, home, try and fill in as much as you can, okay? So employment experience, we're gonna, just gonna go in, I'm gonna go into the recommended fields here and show you some things. So um, in this case, how many pe people speak more than one language? Okay, not me, I only speak one. So you guys are lucky. Um, not lucky, you're smart. Um, so, good. Um, how many people speak more than two? More than two. More than three? A little bit, a little bit. Four, more than five? Okay, wow. <laughs> so, the point is, is what I would do, and this is really, I think, really important, because if you speak, um, for example, Arabic, you just start typing it, and you can add it in. And when we put this in a profile, because remember, this is your resume, so when you said a little bit, if you don't feel comfortable, finish? French. French, yeah. okay. Only put languages that you feel comfortable working in that language, right? Because remember, this is your professional profile, so employers are looking at this. So if you're, if you're at a competency level where you can work, then make sure it's in here, okay? Because that is a relevant factor. And there's all kinds of help text, okay? So when you click this little blue button, if you have questions, it'll give you uh, information. Okay, so we save that. Um, this picked up the degree, so I just want to show you, this is an educational record. So it picked up that it was an undergrad, many, how many people with a master's are above this room? So two, four, 
four, six. So you can add, you'll have multiple records for your education, right? But you'll want to go into each one and pick your faculty or focus area, put in a good description. It would have picked it up, whatever was in your resume. I would encourage you to just review it because it is parsing it and uh, bringing it in from a resume. So you want to make sure that the formatting comes across properly. Um, but you just fill in the rest of the information. Don't worry so much about, this is recommended, but letter grade average, don't worry so much about that, okay? But just get in your, your basic information. If you completed a master's and you did a, a thesis project or some other in your education, put it in here, because that could be interesting to the employer, okay? But we'll just uh, save this for now. And the last thing I'm going to show you, and then we'll go to the labs, is employment experience. So for the engineers, um, what I'm going to do is go into this. So if you're in a professional career in a larger organization, um, you typically talk about the function you worked in. Okay, that's the way we divide it. If you're in a skilled trade, any, any people in skilled trades? Or general labor? Mechanics, electricians, anything like that, okay? So if, you, uh, if you're an engineer, I'll use it because there's a number of you that are engineers, so I'm just going to use that example. So when you were an engineer, did you work in the engineering department of the company? You're an enge in engineering, right? So all you'd have to do is here, where it says functionary, you start typing engineering, and you can add engineering, and then it'll ask you, what did you focus on? Um, so you'll see all of the different engineering duties, right, that you could have focused on. If you're in computer science, it would be slightly different, right? Um, but what we do is we pick, I'll just pick a couple of them, say design, drafting, and drawing. And then say you're a design engineer, then you can put in your skills as well. So CAD 2D, 3D, uh, maybe for some of you, maybe no CATIA, it's a design software, okay? But you can put in all of your skills. If you have a skill that you can't find, you can actually show all selections and you should be able to just add it anyway and we pick it up. So what we're doing is if we have an employer that is looking for somebody even with a skill, we can actually connect you quickly. And it might be a transitional job, but if they're looking for a specific skill, um, we can actually connect you on that. You can talk about your proficiency um, and so on. I'm going to go a little bit faster. If you talk about the job type, was it, did you work full time? How were you compensated? Um, did you have any budget responsibility? And what we would ask you to do is put this, you obviously, a lot of your experience will be international, but if you had a budget, how many people managed a, a budget, right? So when you did that, Put it into Canadian dollars, right, equivalency, because remember, you're applying um, to Canadian employers. So did you have any budget in this role? Did you have any revenue? How many people have managed people, right? Three or four. How many, so you can put in how many direct reports you've been responsible for while in these roles, okay? And then the employer info, it's really important because you've probably heard there, there are challenges, a lot of us are working on it, but with employers um, valuing um, non-Canadian work experience as much as Canadian work experience. You've heard this? So one of the things, partially, it's not understanding, right? Not knowing the companies, because if I know you've worked for this company that I'm aware of, I can put that in my head into a context, right? So what we're trying to do here is to get you to add the information about that employer as well. Does it make sense? Because you could have worked for a large, one of the largest engineering companies in the Middle East, but we might not know about it, right? So put in the information, was it an employer type? So was it public, private, not-for-profit, uh, public sector? How big was it? Because that's one of the ways, right? So how big was the company? Was it a multinational, large company? And if you're an engineer, so you're an engineer, um, um, and I'm going to put in engineering services. What kind of work, what's, what market did your company uh, support? Like when you did your engineering work, right? Telecom and security. 
telecom and security. So what you do is, I worked in engineering services for the telecom and we served the telecom and securities market because then when Rogers or Bell or one of those companies are coming in and say, are there any people in this pool that have this skill set? We will find you right away, right? No matter where you are. That's what we're trying to do. Does it make sense? So you guys investing some time, um, we're all committed to helping you get employment as quickly as possible. Um, I think, uh, you know, I think it's amazing. I wish we could accept more refugees and if we can prove that we can help people get into employment faster, um, I think it's a huge asset to our country moving forward. It will be challenging. There will be challenges. Um, you guys will have to help us, help you and help other people, because it's not going to be easy. But I think by all of us working together and with people like Mustafa and everybody else uh, that's working on this, I think we're going to be able to see real results and hopefully become a model for other countries as well in how to work to help integrate people quickly. So. I'm really happy to be here today talking to all of you. We really hope we can help you. We really, really, really do. All of us, I mean, everybody in this room uh, is committed and we're doing this kind of on top of our other, other regular jobs and every other project that we're doing because we feel passionately about it. So help us help you. Um, build your profile today. We're gonna go to the labs now and then we're gonna come back here and we'll be here for the rest of the day. So hopefully I get to meet some of you and we'll talk throughout the day.